So this video is going to be a very quick introduction to Snappy, also known as Snapcraft or just Snap. And before we get rolling in the video, I want to point out that we're not going to be talking about Flatpak, AppImage, or any of the other alternative package management solutions. I'm saving that for another video. Instead, we're going to focus on what exactly a Snap is, how to install a Snap, and how to build a Snap. And with that said, let's talk about the Snap format. A snap itself is little more than an archive file using the Squash file system, carrying the content of your app along with some metadata that tells the system how to manipulate it. The biggest advantage to using something like a snap is that a developer can always be assured that there are no regressions triggered by changes to the system underneath the app, and never have to worry about issues caused by changing the system libraries because all the dependencies come packaged with your snap. The entire snap project is largely developed by Canonical and is licensed under the GPL version 3. The two core components, being SnapD and Snapcraft, can be found on GitHub. SnapD is written in Go and Snapcraft is actually written in Python. Using SnapD to install snaps is super easy. Most Linux distributions have SnapD available from their default package repositories, though if SnapD isn't available in the default repository, it's probably available in another repository. With Ubuntu, if it's not already installed, you just do sudo apt install SnapD. That will pull down SnapD and enable it in systemd. The Snap CLI is a bit spartan, but you can do pretty much anything you expect from a package manager. You can search available repositories, you can install snaps, you can remove them, you can list installed snaps, and you get the idea. So for this example, we're going to find the GNU application Hello. Now if you saw my Ubuntu Snappy video, I did pretty much the same thing there. We're going to install GNU Hello, and we're going to run it. And uninstalling it is just as easy as installing it. Now snaps in large part are based around this concept of a snap store, which is very similar to a common package repository, but in my opinion it's actually more similar to the Google Play Store. Each app installed from the store is more or less sandboxed, and has the ability to independently update itself in the form of deltas or full-blown updates. In other words, when an app updates, it doesn't affect any other snap that you've installed. There's actually an unofficial web portal for Canonical's Snap Store, so if you view a snap from the Snap Store, you'll see that it gives you a list of required permissions, which is very similar to the way Android does it, and it also displays other important information like the license, architecture, and credits. So MindTest looks like a pretty cool application to test out, let's go ahead and try it. So when searching for MindTest in the CLI, it returned two different snaps. Now we want to install the snap that we saw in the browser, so we'll do snap install mindtest luk 3 yx this is a bigger snap, so it's going to take a bit longer to install. But once it's done installing, all we have to do is run mindtest-luk3yx, and there we go. You can see from the paths in the terminal that the game is using libraries and resources provided by Snap, not provided by the system. So in other words, the game isn't using any system libraries at all. All of the dependencies are sandboxed by the Snap package. So if you're running any other Linux distribution, you could follow these exact same steps and have MindTest running on your system without dealing with your package repositories at all. Now the next big question is, how the heck do you create a Snap? If you've dealt with creating packages for other popular formats like DEBs or RPMs, you'll know that creating those packages is somewhat of a pain, especially when multiple distributions use the same sort of format. For example, OpenSUSE and Fedora both use RPMs, but that does not mean that you can use an RPM that is meant for Fedora on OpenSUSE. When working with snaps locally, including the creation or building of a snap, you'll use a Snapcraft utility instead of the Snap utility. Snapcraft uses a YAML file as sort of a manifest to contain metadata on how a particular application is built. Applications are built from this concept of parts, and parts themselves are reusable components that are basically the main building blocks used to create snaps. Most often parts are the source code and plugins required to build the source code. So in this quick example, I used the built-in init command to create a very basic YAML file. So for our example, we're going to build a new snap based again on the GNU Hello program. We'll change the name to Hello, and then we'll add a new section in here called Apps. This section will allow us to run the command Hello after the snap is installed. The part section is where we'll include the source code for the application, along with the tools required to build the application. In this case, AutoTools is used. And since Hello is version 2.10, we'll go ahead and change the snap version to 2.10. We'll also need to change the confinement setting from dev mode to strict so that we can actually install the snap. Now that our YAML file is ready to rock and roll, let's go ahead and use it to build a snap package. Once the build process is complete, Snapcraft will generate a snap file that we could use to install. Notice that Snapcraft generated three different folders here, parts, prime, and stage. The parts folder contains pretty much exactly what you saw in the YAML file. It'll have the source code for our application, along with the auto tools, which is what we use to actually build the source. So now that we have our snap file, we can install it using the snap utility. Now notice when I try to run it, it complains that it cannot find signatures. 
That's because we created this snap file without signing it. That effectively means that there's no way for your system or snap to actually trust the package is what it says it is. So in the real world, you wouldn't want to install a snap package this way. But because we're using this as a demo, we can go ahead and add the dangerous parameter and force the install that way. And after we've done that, the Hello application is installed and you can see where it and all your other snaps are installed, along with everything else required to run them here in the snap folder. And just like any other snap, you uninstall it the same way. So hopefully this video has helped you understand the snap package and kind of where it fits in the overall package repository package management ecosystem. The idea of packaging dependencies, sandboxing applications, and allowing for independent Delta updates is not necessarily a new concept, but it's a very important one. So that's going to wrap this video up. I hope you enjoyed it. Leave me a comment and tell me what you think. And thanks for watching it.